Welcome everyone to a new video in a new city and today we're here in the capital city of Ecuador right in the old historical center of Quito, Quito, Ecuador and we're going to explore around all there is to see here in the historical center talk a little bit about the city and how it was founded and the history and uh, we'll see what we can see so come along before we do that, I just want to say a real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So the city here of Quito was uh, settled in 1533 by the Spanish. Now, just like, uh, well, every other city that we've been to pretty much here in uh, our trip, uh, along the way here in South America uh, There were people here before the Spanish there were whole civilizations here before the Spanish the Inca were here before the Spanish Before the Inca the Quito people were here, and that's where the city gets its name Quito um, But the Spanish of course when they settled here in 1533 and they founded the uh, the Plaza here first thing they did was they built the church So in 1535 they started building this Which is the church church of San Francisco and now the city was called the San Francisco de Quito and we're actually here in Plaza San Francisco so this plaza now it's speculated that it before it was uh, the central plaza of the Spanish settlement here that it was a central uh, trading trading place for civilizations before the Spanish now it's hard to tell the history here before the Spanish arrived because when the Spanish arrived the Inca were uh, embroiled in a civil war between uh, Atahualpa, the last king of the Incas, who we uh, learned about in uh, when we were in Peru, right? Because he was uh, actually kidnapped by Francisco Pizarro and killed by Francisco Pizarro after uh, extracting a ransom of a ton of gold from the Inca. But uh, Atahualpa was in a civil war with his brother, Huascar, which interestingly enough, also in Peru, we learned about uh, Miguel Grau, who was a uh, Peruvian admiral in the Navy, and his ship was called the Huascar. But anyway, the, they were embroiled in a civil war, so the empire was already weakened, and when the Spanish showed up, this area up here in the north was controlled by Atahualpa, Whereas in Cusco, down south in Peru, was controlled by Huascar. Now, Atahualpa and the, um, his uh, like Incan generals who controlled the areas up here in Ecuador, when the Spanish had already um, started to like uh, attack and sack down in the, in the south in Peru, they uh, they basically the Inca burned all of their cities up here and took like everything with them that they could carry and burned all the cities here so that the Spanish wouldn't be able to uh, you know use any of the resources so by the time the Spanish arrived here in Ecuador in Cuenca and in Rio Bamba and here in Quito where we've been in the cities we've been before these were all just like burned to the ground so it's kind of hard to tell exactly um, like where the the historical sites would have been right like where would the central market have been was it here in this in this square where the Spanish made their central market who knows but what we do have is still some old cool Spanish colonial architecture including the church here the Church of San Francisco the convent also of San Francisco from 1535 and some other old buildings there's this really cool old Baroque church over there that I'm not quite sure what it is uh, we can figure that out and then actually up on top of this hill here like sort of in the distance behind the square that's to the south there's like this uh, statue and I'm forgetting the name right now of the statue I'll put it in the subtitle but um, that's like a definitely a more modern sculpture but it towers over the city and like we've seen in pretty much every city we visited up here in the Andes in Ecuador this city is um, is a flat plain in a mountain valley and basically the the flat land up here in the Andes is pretty hard to come by so a place where you can build a whole settlement or a whole city 
you pretty much just have to do it in the flat land where there's a river running through a mountain valley and that's exactly what Quito is. Let's go real quick. I want to go up into this church. I want to see if it's open. Maybe we can look inside, take a quick film and see what it looks like inside. Let's see. Well, I tried to go into the uh, convent of San Francisco, the church of San Francisco. It's actually closed now. They just finished a mass and I think it closes during the middle of the day and then it'll open up again in the afternoon. Not sure if we're going to be around here in the afternoon, but we may, oh no, gracias. We may actually be uh, uh, back here at some point, probably in the morning sometime, and we'll get a chance to look inside there. But there's actually a bunch of churches around here. That church that we mentioned right over there, that uh, Baroque church, that's actually the church of the uh, Company of, or the uh, Society of Jesus. So it's the Jesuits, which we learned about when we were in Cordoba and uh, made a couple videos about the Jesuits linked in the description of course and then up here if you look up the street there's another church that's the uh, church of Our Lady of Mercy and if you could see over the top of this building I'll zoom in there's like two little spires they look little but that's actually a church that's way up to the north of here um, about seven eight nine blocks north um, and that is the uh, Basilica Nas Voto Nacional. And that one's really cool. That's like this old, not too old actually, neo-Gothic church from the 1800s. We're definitely gonna go see that one because that thing is amazing. I've seen pictures of it and I wanna see it uh, in person. So even though the church itself is closed right now in the middle of the day, there's actually a museum uh, and the convent which is open. You have to pay to get in. It was $4, which is a nice, cheap uh, entrance fee. And inside, there's this beautiful, beautiful courtyard of the convent in this really cool, old, you know, Spanish colonial building. I mean, I'm guessing that all of this is still original. The church I know is still original from 1535 and this building is attached the convent so of course there's probably been some restor restoration over the years you know painting and uh, that kind of thing but it looks to me like this is all original which is really really amazing so this is the museum Museo de Arte Le Religioso Fray Pedro Gocial so it's a religious art museum. And here we have, indeed, some religious art. There's no, uh, not all of these have little, like, info cards. This one does. San Francisco de Assis from the, uh, what is that? 16th century? No, 17th century? 1600s? There's another little courtyard here. Oh, there's a little cafe down there. I think if we go all the way around, exit out there, then you can go to the cafe. I don't think we're going to go to the cafe. Actually, because I just realized I spent uh, pretty much the last of my money, my cash, um, getting into this place. I didn't have as much cash on me as I thought I did. So we're gonna have to go to an ATM We'll definitely find one. There's other places of course around that I want to explore I want to go to some of those churches that we saw or at least see them from the outside. I don't know if we can get in or not, but Like the uh, the Jesuit church that like uh, old Baroque one and I definitely want to go up to see the Basilica Voto Nacional, the like neo-Gothic church. I've seen it in pictures. It looks amazing. There's also a plaza near here, a couple blocks over called Plaza Grande, which also looks very, very nice. I've seen it in pictures and I want to go see it in person. So I think we'll do that after we go through here. Now also I did see, like on the way in, there was a little sign that said Corro y Torres. 
So the choir loft and the towers. So I think we can get up into the towers and the choir loft. Now, if I know my church design, which at this point I do, because we've been in so many, the choir loft is going to overlook the church. So even though we can't get into the church, if we can go into the choir loft, then we might be able to see inside the church from there. This is nice. Just like the other plaza, they have palm trees in here, which I just find very interesting. Because this is not really like palm tree climate, you know? Like Quito has the same climate as like Cuenca and Rio Bamba. It's up in the mountains. Actually, up here is like, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 meters higher than Rio Bamba. And Rio Bamba was like 100 meters higher than Cuenca. So I actually had to take a day here to sort of adjust um, to the altitude. Because even like a few hundred meters can kind of make a big difference. Definitely not as serious of an adjustment as we had to make coming from Lima, which is like basically at sea level or like close to it, um, all the way up here to Cuenca when we came to Cuenca. That took me a few days, honestly. There were, there were about three days where uh, anything I did going up like a flight of stairs, I'd just be out of breath because of the, uh, the altitude getting adjusted, but got adjusted feel pretty well adjusted now. And I felt good about that too because I never mentioned this in any of the Cuenca videos, but I know I've heard stories about people that just can't get adjusted to the altitude. And you don't really know whether you're going to be able to adjust until you get here. And I was really nervous when I was coming from Lima about like, what if I get to Cuenca and I just can't adjust, right? I had a plan B, of course. But uh, luckily, we didn't have to take the plan B. Anyway, the exit's right here. But uh, I think we're going to go and see if we can get up into the choir loft and the towers. Let's go check it out. So we saw the coro, and we were, like I thought, able to see the interior of the church, which was really cool. It's very beautiful. And here's the tower. And going up to the tower, looks like we have to go up these, these like stone spiral staircase. There's another group that just went up ahead of me, which is good because we can actually look. There's like old photos here of the church 1865 oh, original towers 1860 and then uh, Torres Luego del Terremento the towers after the earthquake of 1868 apparently there was an earthquake 1868 and then they rebuilt 
the tower. So here's, yeah, they look, they look different. Here's the towers from 1935. Yeah, see, 1935. And these are the original, or the, at least back from, yeah, these are taller, 1865. But I think we can still get up in the towers and see if we can get a good view of the square from up there. So we came up these stone stairs. There's some wooden stairs here. And I can see the bell up above us. So up in the tower here, beautiful views of the mountains off of the distance. bells up here yep and this beautiful view of the square from up here wow look at that this reminds me of uh, when we were in uh, Santiago Plaza de Armas in Santiago we got to go up into the uh, towers of the history museum get a same similar similar view of that beautiful central square Plaza de Armas Santiago I'll put a link to uh, those videos for Plaza de Armas down in the description but you can see the Basilica Voto Nacional that we only saw the very tops of the towers from down on the ground up here you can see pretty much the whole thing it's really really beautiful now that thing's gigantic I mean, like, that's like nine blocks away. Look how big it is compared to the rest of the buildings around. I mean, there's like a, like a high-rise apartment building next to it that's maybe like eight or 10 floors tall. Look at the size of that thing. We gotta go check that out. Anyway, there's the Church of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuit Church, just on the other side of that church. There's some trees you can see there. That's like, I think, where the uh, Plaza Grande is. So let's go take a look over there. We'll see that. Some people are getting pictures behind me. I don't want to back up and get in their picture by accident. Oh, you can see that statue up there on top of the hill. But this is what I was saying about uh, Quito. I mean, you look in every direction, right? Mountains, mountains, mountains. Every direction. All around. It's just surrounded by mountains. That's what's interesting about Quito is uh, it's a relatively small city, like uh, 1.7 million, I'd say, I think is the population roughly of the city. And then the urban um, area, the metro area, is only like 2.8 million. And the reason you know, is like very different from like, um, like a Santiago or Buenos Aires or Lima. You know, Lima, huge, 11 million, right? Um, Santiago is like six and a half million. And then the metro area is much larger. Buenos Aires, the actual city of Buenos Aires is only like three million, but the metro area itself included is like almost 20 million. So it's gigantic because they're not limited by geography, those cities. They can grow out in, you know, different directions. Here, it's just mountains everywhere you look. So the city is really limited by like, the geography it can't really grow the metro area can't sprawl out any further because the mountains and that's also what makes this uh the city uh, interesting the, they built a new metro here um like it just opened i mean it's brand new i took it to get here to the square and like the stations themselves they they're like so new When you go into the stations and the trains, they even smell new. I think the thing's been running since like December of 2023 and we're here in, in June of uh, 2024. So it's like been barely half a year that the thing's been running. And uh, it's just one line, runs north south through the city. I think 15 stops on it. And whereas in Lima, when we talked about in our transportation 
video about the public transportation system in Lima. Lima only has one metro line also that runs north-south through the city. Lima is a much bigger city and it's shaped kind of like a, like a kidney bean basically along the coast. So one metro line is not really enough to cover that whole city. Whereas here in Quito, because it's a narrow, long mountain valley, the city is very long and narrow north-south. And because it's tucked in the mountains here, the metro line actually serves a good amount of the city, even though it's just one line, which is pretty cool. It's a big city. It has a big city feel, uh, very metropolitan, but it also a very manageable size as far as like transportation and getting around it. Very cool. I've only been here a very brief time, a few days, and uh, I quite enjoy this city already. Let's take one last look out here over the square, out towards the Basilica Voto Nacional out there, and then uh, go back down the stairs, and I think we'll head out. All right, we're on our way. Now, Centro, Centro Historico here in uh, Quito reminds me, of course, a lot of Cuenca. It's very, lots of like preserved older buildings, but uh, it's a lot busier, of course, because this is a much bigger city. A lot more people walking around, a lot more tourists. You know, when we were in Cuenca, we were actually staying in the Centro Historico. Got to walk around that neighborhood quite a bit while we were staying there. And uh, it's a much smaller city, so it's a lot more chill. Uh, this actually reminds me a lot more of like the uh, Centro Historico in uh, Lima, which was very busy most of the time. We would walk around, but also had like the preserved um, buildings, you know, like uh, the uh, like historically preserved buildings. And as you can see right here is the metro stop. So there's a metro stop right underneath the square. It was very, very easy to get to by metro. Super easy, super accessible. Like I mentioned, the metro covers a good amount of the city. It's brand new. Um, it's pretty cheap, but it costs 45 cents per ride. Um, and uh, very clean, very new. So if you're ever in uh, Quito and you want to get to the uh, Plaza de San Francisco, you just take the metro to this stop, San Francisco. Anyway, we're right here. This is the church on our left, the uh, Jesuit church. And it looks like the road is closed off. There's some police there, but it looks like they're letting people through. So maybe we can go through and maybe we can go inside the Jesuit church real quick and see. So we're here in front of the uh, Jesuit church and I wish I could get across the street to get a better view but uh, unfortunately the street is closed like there's police over there and the street is closed there's some people walking through they've been letting some people in but I just asked the security guard here at the church and he said that there's like a march a protest march uh, against the government um, that I guess is happening soon now sometime today I asked him if the plaza, because Plaza Grande, the plaza we're trying to go to is like just down there, and I asked him if that's open or not, and um, I, I didn't quite understand him. I think it might be closed today, but um, we're still going to try and go see it. But for now, we can go inside the church here, so let's go in, take a look. Well, the church, the Jesuit church, cost five dollars to get into. One, it cost five dollars to get in, and two, uh, it, uh, you can't film in there. You can't film, you can't take pictures, can't do any of that. So, there's really no point in us going in there if I can't film. Uh, but, it, from the doorway, it looks pretty nice. Um, it's around, uh, about a hundred years, I want to say, built a hundred years later than the other church that we were in, the, uh, San Francisco Cathedral. And uh, I asked the police officer about the square here, and it is completely closed off for like all day today. So it's right down there, Plaza Grande, that we wanted to go to, um, but it's closed. So 
we're not going to be able to get there, at least not today. All right, so here we are in Plaza Grande, aka Plaza Independencia, and uh, it's open now. We're here on a different day. It's a beautiful statue right here in the middle. And it's a nice square. We're here in the morning. A lot of old historical architecture buildings around. And one thing that I have found out is here that I didn't know was here um, when we were exploring Centro Historico before on a previous day. One of the things is this very old church here, this old cathedral. And uh, apparently, this is the Cathedral Primara de Quito, the first cathedral of Quito. Take a look at it. One of the things, apparently, that is in here that I didn't know before, but I know now, is uh, the tomb of Antonio Jose de Sucre. Very important guy who we have learned about, the uh, marshal of um, the army of Gran Colombia, came down here in 1822 and like liberated uh, liberated Quito and other cities, basically all of all of uh, Ecuador. He's from Venezuela, so I figured he would be entombed there in Venezuela. But it turns out his wife uh, was from Quito, and he was assassinated in uh, 1829, 1830, 29 or 30, I can't remember. I'll put it in the subtitle. But after he was assassinated, his body was like moved around and entombed in different places. And then eventually his wife brought his body back here to Quito. He was entombed here. And then like his remains were sort of like lost to time, if you can believe that. Um, but then eventually they figured out where it was. They did a lot of forensic testing and they determined that yes, these are actually the remains of Antonio Jose de Sucre. And they moved him here, I guess. So let's go in and see if we can find it. Okay, we got in. We're inside the cathedral. There was actually a church service going on in here when we came in. So left when got a coffee, came back. And now we're in. And actually, this is like, we went through the museum entrance. So we paid $2 to get in and come in and basically go through on a tour just to look at all the things in here. But back there in the corner, in the crypt, that's where uh, Antonio Jose de Sucre is. Beautiful shot from right here. I mean, it's really, really, really very beautiful. All right, let's go see. We can find Sucre's tomb. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Antonio Jose de Sucre. Does that mean it's right here? I think it's right here. Oh, this is it. So this is it. Sugre's tomb. This is a really, really impressive chamber here. There's a picture of him right there. Up on his horse. That's him. I think at the Battle of Pinchicha, which, um, let me tell you, we're actually gonna do a whole video 
on the Battle of Pinchicha. We're going to go up, up to the Mount Pinchicha. So there's going to be a lot more about Sucre. But just know that this guy, he's basically like up there in the top, top, top five, top ten famous dudes um, in like the liberation of South America from the Spanish, right? Like Jose de San Martin, Simon Bolivar, Antonio Jose de Sucre. There's tons of stuff named after this guy all over. This is a replica of Simon Bolivar's sword. Sucre was like Simon Bolivar's top military general. We actually saw in a previous video in uh, Peru, the video where we went to the Museum of Gold of Peru and Weapons of the World, linked to the video down in the description, we saw Simon Bolivar's uniform, not a replica, the actual uniform. That was pretty cool. That museum was nuts. There was so much stuff in that place. And it looks like there's uh yeah, these are all like tributes from other uh other militaries. Argentine Army tribute to Jose de Sucre, Antonio Jose de Sucre, Chilean Army. As far as Armadas de Ecuador, the military forces of Ecuador. This is Britain, Ejército del Imperio Britannico. Military forces of Colombia, Venezuela. So that's the thing, like I said, Sucre, he was from Venezuela but he is widely considered across like all of South America to be a great hero and liberator. Bolivia. All right, we saw it. One last look. Antonio Jose de Sucre. All right, so we made it. We're here at the church, the uh, Basilica Voto Nacional, and we're here in front of the statue of Gabriel Garcia Moreno, after whom this plaza is named. This is Plaza Gabriel Garcia Moreno. And we're here at the church. Beautiful cathedral. I mean, look at this thing. Basilica Voto Nacional. And uh, the walk to get up here, like I said, it was about eight or nine blocks. The last five were like straight uphill. Another thing to mention about Quito, especially if you're like a fat, out of shape guy like me, uh, there's a lot of hills in Quito. You're going to get your workout in Quito, that's for sure, walking around. Um, but anyway, we're up here. And it looks like it's open. I see some people walking in. So uh, let's go, let's go see. If it costs anything to get in, we may have to go find an ATM. I haven't found one yet, but uh, let's see. Let's see if we can just get in. Okay, we got inside. It cost $2 to get in. It cost $2, which leaves me with exactly five cents. So we really are gonna have to go to an ATM. Because five cents is not enough to really do anything. Can't ride the metro. Can't take a taxi. But look at this place. Not 
Of course, this is Gothic style, but it's a neo-Gothic. So this was built in the 1800s. But of course, the Gothic style, it's like meant to look, you know, like it was built back in like 1200, 1300 medieval style cathedral. These actual Gothic cathedrals, like the ones in Europe, those things took hundreds of years to be built. They'd start them in, you know, like 1100, and it wouldn't be built and finished until like 15, 1600. This thing, built in the 1800s, went up a lot faster, but still really beautiful inside. Look at this. It's incredible. All the stained glass. And up, up there, even more stained glass. Up inside, like the little little tower, even more stained glass. Really nice. There's very few electric lights in here. I can see some up there, and there are some like you know candles, and there's some like electric lights up there. But most of the light you get in here is just coming in through all these beautiful stained glass windows. And of course it's like a, it's actually a little cloudy out right now. Man, this thing's beautiful. This is really interesting. They have, I think they have the altar, like right here in the center. And there are some pews that face it from this side, some pews that face it from that side, and over here on the sides too. It's really cool design. Cathedrals like this, you look at them from the top and it makes a cross. And they, it looks like they have the the altar right here in the center of the cross with the tower right up above it. This is wild. Well, wow. very, very beautiful. From the outside, it's very impressive. From the inside, it's very impressive also. Very cool. Worth Worth the two bucks to get in and see this? I think so. I think so. Alright, next we gotta head out and find an ATM. Definitely gonna have to do that, but I think let's do that off camera. I think we've seen what we wanna see here today for our video, our first video here in Quito. So, hope you enjoyed it. There's gonna be plenty more here from Quito in the future. So stick around for that. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon.